All right, so we're back. PPF polls. Stream should be better now, folks. Foul called, should have gone with a contact. That's one of those situations. Just watching the cutters here. Travel called. I'm, yeah, but you can go beyond three. Uh, that's a bit of an issue. There was a travel call there, but it wasn't a travel. A bit of a floater. There's got to be a call from the sideline there. That is, I think there was, but there was just a lot of people in the mix there. Ryan, what's that? Catch made by Vivian the Ninja. Well, it makes sense why. Go by Heather. Ryan now providing details. He has been playing Firebird. Ryan, the executive director of Ontario Disc, Associ Disc Sports Association, something like that. ODSA. They're the ones running this tournament. This is, of course, an Ontario Ultimate Championship. And I'm happy to be here. Teams are happy to be here. I think the reason why we're happy, the teams are happy, is really no, doesn't go up to the organization. It's the weather. It's, if you have great weather, things work out. If you have great weather like this, you just need to make sure you have water. And I think as of five minutes ago, there was water now as well, uh, or at least refills. So they, they took care of everything in this one. One thing I have to say I'm really impressed with, medical at this tournament. There was a uh, injury and one of the Stella players injured uh, at the start um, or in the last game. And I saw medical for the first time ever actually running to go and take care of them. Normally I've seen physios and everyone else kind of just wander over. Um, but they ran over, they brought a car over, and she's in the hospital now, but apparently getting better. A oh, great high snag. Needs to move that disc. Many now with the disc. Oh, I'm just off fingertips. Vertical moving very slowly, but something called in the turn. There's a call, but is there a continuation on that? That's the question. BC wandering by here. Waving, look at that. Just just strutting over with this. Uh, it's a pretty sweet looking jersey. So the disc goes back. We're setting back up here in a vertical. But if you look at, there's a there's some movement there. And one deep. Disc is back in play now. Centered. Goes to the far side. The force is a backhand still. Over the top. Great floater. Looking for Huck, but good coverage downfield. That's a great matchup downfield. Looking for Huck now. Gets. Gets a shorter one, now looking for a flick huck. Going to get a backhand throw here. Should be intercepted, but out of bounds. Great pressure. Great, great pressure there all around. Hey Briggs, grab me an apple as well, please. Thank you. 
Oh, banana. Thank you. No. They taste like rice paper. Oh, and another D here. There's the PPF is having troubles moving it up the line there. That was the same turnover we saw earlier from Manny too. And I've forgotten her name, and I apologize for that, but we'll try to get it later. Sorry we've been having so many issues with our stream. Comes down to an internet connection, which I'm normally used to being much more stable. Oh, great pressure there as well with the poach, but unfortunately this is going to be the... Uh, when you do a dedicated poach like that, you need to have one of your people run by. They're calling out of bounds on the far side, but... So there's still a conversation. There's a contested out here. There's a, there's a call for out. Disc will probably come back unless they can absolutely agree that it was in. And it's going to go back. Fortunately, no replays. Just yet. And a timeout is called. Gives me a chance to go and check on the stream again. Thank you all for being patient. We'll nail this at some point today. Hopefully now. All right, let's see what end zone strategy Stella brings here. Traditional, of course, would be to go vertical, usually with three, three ladies in there. We have five, which makes for a crowded end zone. This pickup line bounces off. Great D. Good field midfield positioning. And we have a throw. Someone deep. Oh, and a misread. We've seen those uh, those hucks, and that's the problem with the uh, with the flick hucks is they come out a little bit blady, and especially when the uh, the player's running directly away from you. It's coming directly from behind. They can't read which way it's going to blade. Or if it is blading or if it's flat. Stella now back with this. Just great direction from the sideline. Good D. 
and an easy snag in the end. If you get a chance, pop back about 10 seconds. There was a visible indication from the handler that she wanted a specific play, and that's what we need. That's what teams need is, well, once defense can key on that, it can be a different situation, but that was a good indication from the sideline, or the handler there on the sideline, to say, I need you to make a cut. I am looking at you and I'm concentrating on you. And she did that and it felt like stall two or three. So there's great fundamentals here as well for Stella. Uh, PPF has been struggling with a bit more, hanging onto the disc a lot longer, but if we look at some of the handlers that they've got, it's a very young team. You've got players that are still in university, have only been playing in university for a couple of years as well and developing from there. You've got more veteran players as well that are in there, but they're not on all the time hogging playtime. They're balancing it out. This is a long tournament. They have 10 round robin games, I believe, before they go onwards. It might be less. They might just go five. I think I've misread the schedule. So I think I'm going to go with they've got 10 seems really wrong. So they've got five games, and then they go in after that. A loss to Stella does not preclude them from anything else, but it would be great for PPF to start off with a win here. Also, Stella takes the first point out of half. If you are watching the stream, by the way, that pull landed inbounds. Looking for a very deep kind of cuts here. Oh, and a miscommunication. It was a nice cut, but just miscommunicated. It was a nice cut going out. The throw was a beautiful throw. If she'd continued her out cut, it would have happened. But Tanya just turned in before the throw went. And she was cutting out of a blind spot as well. And a blind spot in terms of the body of the handler, or sorry, the coverage on the handler was blocking visibility of the cut. So the thrower didn't quite know what was going on either. Players catching up here. Becky just streaking away and poaching all over the field. Her player is all the way over here on the right side of the field. Not in. Some sort of call behind the play, probably on the, about the stall count. A stalled down call that should come back if there is that contest. Wind has picked up here. You might be able to hear it. It's probably about 15 kilometers an hour, just gusting to that, but then dying down after that. Still another 30 minutes, just under 30 minutes left in this game. Stella been playing very well, PPF been playing well. Admittedly, they could be playing better. And Stella scores. Break. I believe that is now 9 5. If you're on the stream, please let me know. And you're watching. Thank you to Matt Snow. Solid for four minutes now. We dropped the bandwidth, we rotated the antenna. We tried to bribe some people, but Canada not being a corrupt country. 
they did not accept it. They instead just sent us a a bill. But here we are now. Nine five. Stella looking really strong. Four points away from the end of the game. PPF, nine points. They can do it. Hope the quality at home is also pretty good for you. Try to get the scores for some of the other games too. We had a, Ryan Briggs uh, and I tried to set up score reporter last night. We were having a lot of issues with it. We might have locked it to only USA Ultimate members as well, but. Fingertips catch there as well. There's a nice floaty throw downfield. Wind popped it up perfectly at the end. And PPF at six. Nine six. It wasn't that the Stella player misread it. It was that the wind bounced it. Folks enjoying the shade. Hoping to get some more shade on me here. Maybe I'll just do a little bit of an adjustment. Get some shade on the camera at least. PPF pulling. In case you were wondering which way is north and south, we are facing south. This field runs east-west or west-east, whatever you're preference for that ordering is. Do we have any word on that person who headed off to the hospital? Okay. I'll check with the ladies afterwards. Chatting with one of the other tournament directors here. All right, let's take a moment to chat about this point, then we'll chat about poles. Good pressure here, but upfield hand or cut available. Oh, and then it's a nice flick, but Darcy is there as well. And there's a f no call. Darcy's just moving it quickly. There is a mismatch somewhere down the field though. And it's being picked up now. Serena pops it up. Pull down. Oh, and then a nice big floater to Darcy. She's gonna have lots of time and just easy. Little bit of a spike at the end. Nothing in intended. Nine, seven, a bit of a roll now with a break. And the captain or one of the captains at least, making a statement. No, 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 I'm, I'm putting that umbrella away. No, I'm kidding. I have an umbrella here in the broadcast scaffolding, I guess. And it's providing a little bit of shade on the ground. Nine, seven. D-line out there. Darcy getting some physio on the sideline from Steph, one of the other PPF players who's a physio. 
and she is basically getting physio on the sideline. When it's her turn to go out, she goes out, runs hard. Her team goes with her as well. And I think that's been the key is that everyone on PPF is feeling the energy a bit more now, but they need to pick it up. I think that's Manny with a pull. So it moves it quickly. Great pressure there on the D. Big hop down the field. Jackie on the... Jackie put pressure on that, but not that much pressure. I think that's uh, an unforced error. Cuts down the field again. This disc is hung, being hung on to far too long. Oh my goodness, uh, excellent timing there. Oh, and then thrown away. That's unfortunate. Might have slipped out of her hand a little bit. Doubles called. I think doubles. Anyhow, that means a vertical stack. Let's watch the play that comes out of this. We're gonna concentrate on the stack at this point. We know where the, we know where the disc is. It's right there. Let's look at everyone else. And that cut came from the back of the stack. And then from the middle, pick called. Another pick, and that one will go back. The previous pick had not affected the play, uh, as, as in the, the mark wasn't close enough, but the person who was picked was in the stack. Oh, good pressure there. But a foul while getting back up. Danielle. Danielle is one of the uh, few players that I know in women's that wears a mouth guard. Uh, generally, overall, I don't think many ultimate players wear a mouth guard. Might be something to look into. Upline cut. Easy. Too easy. No, that might sound like a little bit of a heckle, but I've been beat on those upfield as well, and it's not a good feeling. Okay, let's talk about the poll just briefly, anyone who's watching or listening. Uh, Matt indicating that the stream is going in and out again. I'm going to try to get back and see if I can fix it. I think there's just interference from people walking around as well. So we're going to see if we, how much higher we can get that. And I can do a quick test here. It seems it's gotten a little bit slower. We'll try to do that test again later on. We'll reduce the stream rate a little bit. I hope it's still watchable and people are still able to see what's going on. Anyhow, a poll. <laughs> Wanting to say that, talk about it for quite a bit. A poll should allow your defense to get and put pressure on as quickly as possible. That's why poles that go off to the sideline a bit more need to be reset to the middle. That reset pass is part of your pole timing as well, or at least the defense timing for the pole. So if you're looking to do that and you're trying to get the pressure on as quickly as possible, low hucks that are hard and fast, usually not the best unless it's not catchable. And I think that's the key, is if you make something that's not catchable and make it non-catchable or playable for as long as possible. So unfortunately, uh, we've had it across both of our games, we've had some short poles and we've had some longer poles and distance isn't all that it's cut up to be. Because there's nothing worse than a defense that's uh, playing against an offense that's already in motion. 
Bit of an overthrow there. I think the key to this game has been that Stella has played excellent defense on PPF. At least the handlers have given the handlers few options. And the PPF handlers have taken the riskier options. Uh, simply they've hung on to it long enough. Injury there, going for the substitution. And then another uh, throwaway. That one goes out of bounds. So a few throwaways back to back. Hello to Ryan and Jordan Howe. Well, not Ryan Howe, but Jordan Howe watching the stream. Yes, it might be a little bit touch and go. We'll try to do the best that we can. Big moving upfield, but no deep options there other than upline right now. And once again, really struggling here. Nice big floater, should be easy, and it is. Travel call though. There's still discussion going on about the travel here. <laughs> Foul called. And who do we have wandering by here but Rahil Suleiman. You've known him as the voice of uh, CUC broadcasts. Oh, and a drop outside the end zone by Stella. And there, very importantly, our first cloud of the day. And pick called, but it should not affect the play. There's going to be a catch up. How you doing, Rahul? He says he's good. He's asked me how I'm doing. I'm doing well as well. Nobody appreciates me, Rahel. He says everyone appreciates me. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Once again, I apologize for the quality of the stream. Sorry for missing that there. But the discussion was that there was the dish did not have to come back, and then Darcy put it in the end zone. There's really only been one dish she's missed, and that was on a slightly errant throw. Uh, I think the message from this, this game is that there's a lot of work to be do done. PPF is now, I think they're saying it's 11. So I'm gonna bump that up. It's 11-8. Thank you, Rahel. Rahel is checking the score. Oh, it's all good. But Ryle is showing us the score, 11-8. Okay, PPF now. Points do matter overall in case there are ties. Always score as many as you can, even when you're behind. 
and they can do this. There's still 15 or just under 15 minutes left in this match. Apologies for any vibrations. We're moving around up here, making things happen. Shorter pull. Lots of space upfield to operate in, but that that look to the handler came at four. Stella doing really well there. Good chemistry overall. Taking advantage of the height as well, and that's a height mismatch. There we go, still looking at the handler. You can see her tracking her the whole way as well. And once there's no options there, Upfield, handler cut. Stella's handlers playing very well here. Twelve eight. Stella is on game point. Dan Ralph for uh, Whiplash going by. Uh, these are pretty pretty good games here. Yeah, Kurt from uh, Whiplash coming by as well. Kurt, a second year player and uh, also a lifetime smoker. It's habits that we're trying to get people to change. But he's uh, good friends with Dan Ralph. Dan Ralph was the captain of Whiplash last year, one of the two captains. And uh, that team now seated pretty high at this tournament. See if they hold their seed. They are coming in a little bit below radar. I think the team to watch though, Surge. Mobile stream, if you're getting it. Bad quality, apparently green blotches all over the place. I wonder what the regular stream quality is like. I have looked at the mobile stream, it is blotchy and green. I, fortunately, I'm sorry, I can't fix that at this time. So pull, middle of the field, kind of bit side, it's gonna move now. And the defense is on. And already pressure offense. Becky gives it to Darcy. Darcy sends a big up. I think that's Serena down there. Uh, and in and out of her hands. I will move that net at the end of this game. The issue for PPF is, can they mentally bounce back from this game when they play Terra next? Oh, and Rahil does it for me. Thank you. And who's that? I think that might be Yakov in yellow. Here we go. There's great pressure here. Um, I think I have to say the handler movement and, and the travel has been called. But I think the handler movement from Stella is phenomenal. Tiny with a little bit of pressure there, but timing was a bit off. You have to look at these uh, PPF ladies. Some of them have speed that cannot be matched this time. Uh, players especially like Becky, Darcy, players who could be playing and, and do in fact play on Capitals. <sighs> Becky putting her body on the line. I have seen her do crazier things in League, especially when League falls on her birthday.
All right, let's look once again at the pressure that's coming from PPF. It seemed to work the last couple of turns and what the response from Stella is. We've got a far sideline handler who hasn't really moved as of yet. Now gets immediately mobile as soon as the disc moves, even just a little bit. Win there playing a big part of that turnover. It's coming basically directly from where the camera's pointing now. Fortunately, a break throw directly to the Stella player, followed by a deeper throw. They can't afford a timeout here, and they call it. Stella now poised to take the game. And we're going to check on feedback again from you on the Twitterverse. If you think my commentary is a bit too much, let me know. If you disagree with my comments, let me know. I want to have a conversation with you. Okay, thanks for uh, Mandy Dunbar's feedback. Regular stream quality is watchable. No green blotches here. So definitely something on our server side is causing those green blotches on the mobile stream. I think it is because we're running a lower bandwidth. We'll try to find out what's going on in the other divisions as well. Bytown is 2-0. We just saw them play on the field one over. They are about to play. I'm not sure, but maybe one of the Whiplash teams coming up. Glide, of course, looking good as well. Looking good. <laughs> BSC just played Bled. And So, uh, it will be this the game following this one will be PPF versus Terra, right. and uh, this game finishes in about four minutes. So this would be good timing, and we're just going to set up with a view here of base of the whole end zone. We do have one handler here that's slightly to the left of your screen there, and a third on the far sideline. It appears there's a four woman stack there and a violation. You can see the front one's on all an ISO. And there needs to be help under that. And there isn't, unfortunately, and that is 13 8. 